What if the whole world was being deceived and you were the only one who knew the truth? Have you ever actually felt like that? We're going to be exploring that today. You're having coffee with Conrad on... Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad, and I'm your host, Conrad, from ConradRocks.net, rocks of revelation being poured out to you. Now, you already know my passion is for you, yes, you, the listener to the Coffee with Conrad podcast, to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Now, part of having that spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus is discernment. When we're bibled up and we're walking lockstep in the Holy Spirit, we have less of a chance of being deceived, even if the world is buying Satan's lies hook, line, and sinker. While I was researching this podcast, I had some fairly traumatic memories come up in my subconscious mind, you know, stuff that was very uncomfortable. And keep in mind, I've always been curious about things I love to read. I read a lot. And I knew somehow that knowledge was power. You know, that's back in the 70s and 80s. Right now, information is everywhere. You can Google stuff, but it was different back then. And this led me to sometimes being the only person in a room that was correct on more than one occasion. And I had my feet put to the fire in front of several people. And I remained in my conviction because I knew I was right. I'd already already knew the information. And while others had the illusion of competence or whatever, they were sticking with the popular argument. And later, while I was proven correct, it was still a fiery trial moment. You know, it wasn't comfortable. I was ridiculed, ridiculed and embarrassed. But, you know, why couldn't I just go along with all the others? Why couldn't I just simply accept the popular argument? Because I knew that deep down, that I would be betraying truth. And that's what we need to ask ourselves in this podcast. Are we betraying truth just to go along? And I knew that holding on to the truth was more important than seeking the approval of man. So my little small trials, I mean, seriously, they're small compared to what we're talking about today. In this podcast today, I want you to think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three little Jewish boys that they stuck together even though all of Israel, all of Israel was participating in the worshiping of Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Think about that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego literally went through the fire of persecution, and they were vindicated in the end. Their unswerving fidelity to the truth led to a whole nation knowing that the God of Israel was alive and well. So today, during this podcast, as you listen to it, I want you to keep these three little Jewish boys in mind. Put yourself in their shoes. Ask yourself, why didn't they just go along with the crowd? Ask why they stuck to their guns no matter what. Buckle up today, because it's going to be a wild ride. We are having coffee with Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Beware, the Bible foretells of widespread spiritual deception. Jesus himself warns us that in the last days, false Christs, false messiahs, false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the very elect, if you read Matthew 24, 24. Paul echoes this, cautioning that the Antichrist will come with all power, false signs, and lying wonders, and with all wicked deception, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10. Now, across both the Old and the New Testaments, we as Christians are alerted to be on guard against deception. Satan himself is labeled as the father of lies, we know that in John 8, 44, and a deceiver of the whole entire world in Revelation 12, 9. Deception is clearly identified as a major tool of the devil. Why such strong warnings about spiritual trickery? Because deceivers can come in very convincingly. They're backed by very compelling stories. I've fallen for a few myself. They have apparent miracles, too. And 
they have these appeals that like to tickle our ears and tickle our pride. The undiscerning can be easily led astray, and this jeopardizes their very salvation. As followers of Jesus Christ, we must be vigilant against cunning deceivers who secretly introduce these damnable, destructive heresies, as Peter warns about in 2 Peter 2.1. Take heed of Paul urging Timothy to be mindful of false doctrines like gangrene spreading infection through the body, 2 Timothy 2.16 and 17. Now, the scriptural warnings are too frequent, and they're too emphatic to ignore. Even sincere believers are vulnerable to compelling impostors who masquerade as messengers of light. Now, ask yourself, are you spiritually prepared? We must guard our hearts with the end times deceptions looming that are all over the place. The words of Jesus in Matthew 24 should send chills down our spines. Tune in, hang on, as we explore some of these specific dangers. You know, if you just sit back and reflect, we're living in this post-truth era, and we as Christians should possibly be concerned, don't you think? In recent decades, okay, you've been watching it, If you're alive right now, you've been watching it happen since the 60s. But statistics point to shifting mindsets around truth, facts, and biblical morality. Consider the following here. Church attendance has steadily declined among Western nations over the past 50 years. Only 36% of Americans attended monthly in 2021 versus 70% in 1930. In a 2021 Gallup poll showed only 24% of Americans view the Bible as the literal Word of God, down from over 40% in the 1970s. Acceptance of practices like abortion, gay marriage, pornography, and cohabitation have risen markedly. Today, over 60% in the United States believe abortion should be legal, versus only 15% in the 1960s. And you've probably watched the divorce rate go up. It has doubled from 1960 to today. Belief in absolute right and wrong has declined, with 75% of Americans now viewing morality as relative, according to Barna Research. Now, these statistics paint a picture of a post-truth society, where biblical authority wanes while personal experience and emotion now drive moral reasoning for many people. Less objectivity, more subjectivity. Now, for Christians, these trends should raise alarm bells about the deepening spiritual deception that's on the earth right now. Do you remember when the prophet Isaiah warned, woe to those who call evil good and good evil? Hey, man, that's part of our commercials, man. (laughs) That's what's going on. You know, we watch football and these commercials are coming on. I'm like going, dude, no wonder I don't watch TV. But as universal ethics slide, careful biblical discernment becomes all the more critical. Rather than conform to changing cultural tides, we as Christ followers must anchor ourselves to scriptural wisdom against the deception, this onslaught of deception. Though difficult, walking the narrow path with Jesus, not the broad path with the world, with the crowd, with the Joneses, with everybody, keeps us from drifting into this compromise, this onslaught, never-ending compromise of the world, and I believe Satan is pulling those strings. So let's continue examining how to guard against this deception and uphold God's truth amidst this post-truth age. The spiritual stakes could not be higher. I'm sure y'all know me by now. I love to include scriptures. I mean, scriptures are the truth. It's the Word of God. And also like to include my personal experience. I call it experiential theology, which means I'm living out these scriptures. But let's take a look at some of these scriptures that show that the whole world and even undiscerning Christians can be deceived. Not only that, it's the goal of Satan to do this. In Revelation 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. 
So this verse clearly establishes that Satan is the deceiver of the whole world. And I'm going to show you a few examples about how the whole world can be deceived in a little bit. But this uh, fits the topic perfectly of potential worldwide deception. Matthew 24, 24, where there shall arise false Christ, this is Jesus talking, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So Jesus warns that false prophets are going to come, and they're going to have signs and wonders. You know, and signs or wonders are there to uh, deceive the believers, but also they, they confirm the word, right? So we have to be discerning here. So even the very elect are vulnerable to this deception. And there's incidences in the Bible where this has happened. Think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? All the Jews were like, okay, let's just worship the... Uh, Let's just worship this statue Nebuchadnezzar put up. But these three discerning Jewish boys, they they held to the truth. Now, like I said here, one of my problems with the signs here is signs follow a believer, and that's guaranteed in Mark chapter 16. But we need to appraise the fruit of the person that has the signs following. Jesus says, you're going to know them by their fruit. So if we're not fully engaged in reading the Word and walking lockstep with the Holy Spirit, we could be deceived thinking that we might have a biblical standing. So we've got to get our Bible in. 1 John 5, 19, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. John reiterates the idea of the whole world being deceived through wickedness slash sin, which comes from Satan in our flesh. But keep in mind, the whole world can believe something. The whole world can believe something and be dead wrong, as I'll demonstrate with a few hoaxes here in a little bit. In Revelation 13, 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. Now, this de depicts the deception of miracles from the second beast, you know, the false prophet, to mislead people into false worship. Paul, to 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 11, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So Paul warns of powerful signs and wonders from Satan to deceive those who reject the truth. And God allows this. I mean, you know, you can only reject the truth so long. And, you know, there's, he even gives Jezebel a space to repent, but time's up at some point. You are having coffee with Conrad on ConradRocks.net. You know, as I was doing my research for this podcast, I, I notice here I'm focusing a lot on Satan deceiving the world. And, you know, you think that, the, that it's going to come in through a worldly influence or a worldly resource. Like when I talked about the demons or aliens in a previous podcast, you know, that's like the devil working. But I, I started thinking and praying about it, that wolves are going to enter into the flock in the Christian community. I want to, I want to go ahead and address this too. Now, we already read in Matthew 24, 24, for there, this is Jesus talking, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. This is worth re-looking at because... False Christs are going to come in from the Christian community. I wanted to drive that home. And there's more verses that support this. For instance, in Acts 20, 29 through 30, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves, he's talking to the church here, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. You know, that's sheep stealing, basically. These verses speak of grievous wolves entering the flock, indicating that the deceptive leaders may come from within the Christian community. 
okay? Believers should be wary because not all who claim to be part of the faith are genuine. There's wolves among the sheep. Deceptive leaders often aim to draw followers away from the true teachings of Jesus Christ. Here's another verse that supports this. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. In no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So these verses highlight that false apostles, I mean, apostles are part of the Christian community. So this deception doesn't just come from worldly resources, okay? This highlights that false apostles and deceitful workers can appear as ministers of righteousness, even as angels of light. And I remember being in the, the, new, the new Age movement, they were talking a lot about the beings of light, you know? So we as believers, we need to exercise caution because deceitful leaders, people that are popular, may seem pious. They may seem pious and righteous on the surface, but they can be driven by ulterior motives. Their outward appearance can be misleading, making discernment crucial. Another passage, 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words, they're not speaking the truth, <laughs> with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So I want you to catch this here. This passage warns of false teachers who introduce heresies and lead many astray. This is from within the church, okay? Believers must be wary because these false teachers may use deceptive and manipulative tactics such as exploiting people's desires. You know, you want to be rich or exploiting their vulnerabilities. These actions can tarnish the reputation of the gospel. That's what it meant that people are going to talk badly about Christianity because of these false deceivers. It's kind of interesting that even sometimes worldly people can look at like a false Christian teacher and go, yeah, that guy's just a, he's just a con man, right? They, it's like they have discernment, but we go, oh, well, he's a Christian and he's popular, so he must be right. This is why we must be bobbled up, walk, lock, step with the Holy Spirit, and have discernment. Now, here's another warning here in 1 John 4.1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So this advises believers not to believe every spirit, but to test whether a teaching or spirit aligns with God's truth. How are you going to do that? You got to know the Bible, right? Even those who claim to be prophets or spiritual leaders can be false. Believers need to exercise discernment because not all who profess faith are genuine, and some may promote teachings contrary to the very basic core principles of Jesus Christ. In summary, these verses underscore the necessity of believers to exercise discernment. We must be good Bereans. We need to verify the teachings against what the Bible actually says. And don't be swayed solely by someone's appearance how many followers they have, how charismatic they are. Deceptive individuals, they can be very convincing, and their, their motives run counter to genuine faith. We must stay grounded in the Word of God. That means read your Bible, people. It's self-defense against false doctrine. We must also seek the Spirit for discernment, right, so that we're not deceived. Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey by Conrad is a must-read for those aspiring to be in the prophetic ministry or those looking to learn more about the supernatural spiritual aspect of Christianity. This book gives an intimate look at the author's experiences with astral projection, telekinesis, poltergeist, precognition, and demonic encounters before he was born again. 
Conrad also shares his supernatural prophetic experiences after being born again and shows you what it is like to be born again to see the kingdom of God. With plenty of scripture references and personal testimonies, this book is sure to give you the boost of confidence you need to jump into the supernatural aspect of Christianity. Get your copy of Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey today. All right, now I talked a little bit about this in a previous podcast, um, Aliens or Demons, and it was basically, th this section of that podcast was to illuminate that the whole world can be deceived, right? So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to glance over these just a little bit, um, and there's some hoaxes that people still believe today that have totally been debunked. The first hoax I'm going to talk about is the Piltdown Man hoax. The Piltdown Man was a famous hoax in 1912 when amateur archaeologist Charles Dawson claimed he had found skulls, tools, and bones in England representing the missing link between apes and humans. Remember how Charles Darwin was trying to get this gap uh, between apes and humans, like, we came from the apes. For 40 years, Piltdown Man was heralded as proof of human evolution in science textbooks and in museums. But all the way back in 1953, right, this is 40 years later, it was proven to be an elaborately orchestrated fraud. The bones were artificially treated to seem ancient, but were only a few decades old. Piltdown Man demonstrated how even scientists, scientists, these are experts, they can be fooled and deceived. And the whole world bought it hook, line, and sinker. Now, here's a fun one. Remember the Loch Ness Monster? This came from a photograph in 1934. And this Loch Ness Monster photograph was revealed to be a hoax decades later in 1994. A man named Christian Sperling confessed to helping stage the photo using a toy submarine outfitted with a fake monster head. Now, this demonstrates how easily people can be fooled into believing outlandish claims even when swayed with compelling images. Now, look at the images we have today. I have seen artificial intelligence make videos, and you cannot tell that they're not real. Okay, so there is deception everywhere. And we as Christians must listen to new doctrines with discernment, not just open hearts. Okay, we need to check teachings against Scripture to avoid spiritual deception. The Loch Ness Monster hoax. Very good example of that. Here's another hoax, the Crop Circles hoax. I talked about it for a second or two in the Aliens or Demons podcast. I guess I'll include the link to that because that, that podcast basically got me thinking about this one. But the intricate crop circle designs, you remember them? They were all over the place. Uh, they, were, they happened overnight in fields. And these were eventually revealed to be elaborate hoaxes. Uh, groups of hokers demonstrated that they had stomped the flattened patterns using planks and ropes. I saw the documentary on this. They fooled people into believing that the circles were supernatural signs from aliens. Remember that? This demonstrates the need for Christians to exercise healthy skepticism when evaluating new spiritual claims and teachings. Now, keep in mind, just as crop circle hoaxers fooled many people, the whole world was buying that. And I was like, oh, man, this is cool. There's aliens, you know, and they were doing this. Purveyors of false doctrines can also cunningly lead people astray. These hoaxers were cunning. So we as Christians, we need to be grounded in scriptural truth and discernment from the Holy Spirit to navigate these deceptions. All right, so how can followers of Christ be deceived? While grounded Christians walk the narrow path of truth, none of us are completely immune to spiritual deception. Scripture warns that imposters are going to come in, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ, 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. If we're not vigilant, even the very elect, the faithful, can be led astray. So how does deception creep in? Lack of biblical literacy. We've got to read the Bible. When not regularly reading and studying Scripture, we become detached from the discerning voice of God. You know, I like to think that God speaks through Scripture, right? If we're just skimming devotionals 
while neglecting deeper Bible study, that's going to make us ripe for twisting from false teachers. We've got to read the Bible. It's self-defense against false doctrine. Another way that we can be deceived is pursuit of worldly wisdom. Okay, we don't, we, we're not conformed to the world. Secular humanism and moral relativism have infected the church in academia, media, and entertainment sources. It's, it's in there. Consuming these without balancing their claims against the Word of God, this is going to court deception in our own minds. Another way that we can be deceived is by simply not testing the claims. Traditionally sound preachers, authors, and institutions can sometimes drift from what the Bible actually teaches. Rather than blindly accepting teachers from so-called experts, we must examine them against the Bible ourselves and kick it around with our mentors. Read the Bible for yourself. It's self-defense against false doctrine. That's one thing I want to get across in this. Another way that Christians can be deceived is false teachers, flat out, from TV prosperity teachers to progressive theologians introducing this new hip, new wave teachings, uh, charismatic cult leaders, I'm thinking of Jim Jones right now, they can come in as wolves in sheep's clothing. Without sharp discernment, their heresies can lead faithful elect Christians into dangerous apostasy. So we need to learn how to cultivate discernment and stand firm on God's unchanging word, and amidst this never-ending deception that's like an onslaught in our TVs, internet, in our churches. In the Bible, you know, what, what's that verse, Hebrews 4.12? Yeah, this is a very good verse here. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's a mouthful, but it can divide asunder the soulish stuff from the spirit. When we're rightfully dividing scripture, these false doctrines are going to kind of present their ugly heads. So read your Bible spiritually. Get into it. Don't just do a devotional and not think about it. Meditate on what, the Word of God daily. So to sum all this up, we need to guard against deception. We've explored how even faithful Christians can become deceived if they're not vigilant. What safeguards can help us stand firm in truth against spiritual trickery? We need to study and live by God's Word. You know, be doers of the Word, not hearers, only deceiving our own selves. We need to implement regular Scripture reading, kind of like food, right? We need to... to, Read the Bible as much as we eat. We need to meditate on it. Think about it. Kick it over with mentors. We need to be in Bible study, and we need to immerse ourselves in God's truths while strengthening spiritual discernment. We have to make daily time in the Word absolutely an an essential part of our life. Also, we need to rely upon the Holy Spirit. Through Christ, we have the Holy Spirit's guidance into truth, a way he, he's going to guide us into all truth, right? He's going to lead us away from deception. So we need to be worded up and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need to learn to listen to and depend on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit rather than worldly thinking. Also, we need to beware of internal deception. Jesus and the apostles warned repeatedly of false teachers arising from within the church itself. You know, I'm thinking that he says there's going to be wolves in sheep's clothing, but I think there's a lot of false teachers that don't really know that they're false. They believe what they're saying, right? So we need to scrutinize teachings by leaders against Scripture to expose contradictions. We also need to anchor ourselves in Christ above all. He's our top priority. When all other ground seems shaky, Christ remains the stable rock of truth. We need to fix our eyes firmly on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and we will weather the passing storm of deception. Surrounded by a web of falsehoods, Christians must stay rooted in the life-giving truth of God's Word. With discernment from the Holy Spirit and Christ at the center, 
we can walk that narrow path that Jesus talks about all the way home to our Heavenly Father. The stakes are eternal, people, but God's truth will prevail. Well, I'm about finished here. I just want you to know that spiritual deception is everywhere. It's running rampant. But we serve the God of truth. Jesus guides us through the darkness. My prayer is that this podcast has brought some sobering awareness along with some empowering wisdom. Remember that we walk by faith, not by sight. We need to fix our eyes firmly on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We need to continue growing in biblical literacy and spirit-led discernment. If you found this intriguing, I encourage you to check out a prior episode that I did that kicked off this one. It's called Aliens or Demons, Unmasking the Deception. It dives into how supposed alien encounters often show striking similarities to the demonic manifestations recorded in Scripture in what people report in their daily lives. The battle in the heavenly realms that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 6 is spilling over onto planet Earth. We need to be alert and ready, wise as serpents and yet innocent as doves. The deception will only deepen as time goes on. But take heart, for our redemption is also nearing as well. God bless you. Keep standing firm on Jesus' eternal truth. Now I want you to check out the freebies for listeners in the show notes. There's some really cool stuff in there. There's some links to my books and some other cool stuff. So be sure and check out the show notes. Thank you for being in my life. Please share this episode with friends and family on social media. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.